Last topic, chapter 18, electroplating. We are. It's awesome. All right. Tell me what. That was really nice of you. No, it was you and Benoit. Okay. Here we go. Quiet. Electroplating is plating a surface of a metal and sometimes a plastic, but plating a surface with um, a metal. But you have to push electrons into it to make it happen. I'm going to an example and two different examples. And when I'm, we're going to plate that spoon with copper. Example way. Which video? Uh, I got a better one for you today. Film. So, so. Yeah. Time warp. Oh boy, that's a spoon. Sorry about that. Spoon. No. Good question. Uh, Sean asked if this is how we're going to silver plate the bottle. It is not. That will be with a chemical reaction, with, not with electroplating. After the we do some other fun things after the test. Okay? What we have... Shh. Sorry if you're listening on Schoology. We have to have... <laughs> we have to have silver ions in the solution. And you'll understand why. And we also have to have a silver electrode like we have here. The thing is, what if we have what if we have a spoon that we want the silver plate? Okay? How do we do that? And if we want ten point eight want ten point eight grams to be deposited. How long will it take with a 10 amp current? Whoa, new word. Right? So what's happening? Uh, um, we put a negative charge here. What's going to happen to the spoon? Possibly or negatively charged? Negatively charged, okay? This is going to be negatively charged. What is going to be attracted to that or where is the, and this is going to be positively charged over here, where is the silver ions going to be attracted to? The spoon. And with those electrons, what's it going to become? Silver metal. Why do we need a silver electrode? So it doesn't what? Doesn't compete. Uh, we're pushing. We're pushing these ions to become onto here. What's going to happen to this silver electrode? It's going to lose electron, right? It's going to be oxidized, and we're going to make more ions. So really, this electrode is to feed the ions, to keep the ions in solution. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going now. Keep it going. Alex Mankey, do you have a question? Um, as much as it could with that amount of time, depending on the current, yes. Yes. So the question is, how, mu how long would this take? Okay. So I'm going to make this whole long equation down here. A few things on your green sheet we have not attacked yet. 10.8 grams of silver. We have to get to time. 
We have to get to time. How easy is that? Um, how many? Yeah, we're doing uh, dimensional analysis. Doesn't look like. Doesn't that nice? So I have 26.98 grams per one mole of silver. What else do we need to get to figure this out? For every one mole of silver, this is the tricky part. For every one mole of silver, how many electrons? One mole of electrons. I got it. And what's an amp? That's a coulomb per second. Coulomb is a charge, so there's 10 coulombs through per second if you have a 10 amp. Amperage is how much current is flowing. The higher the amperage, the more coulombs are flowing through a wire per second. All right, so we need to get the mole of electrons here. We have, a, we have something on your green sheet where it's coulombs per mole of electrons. Anyone see it? The conversion is... Faraday's constant, say mole, coulombs per mole. How many? 96,500. For every one mole of electrons, in other words, for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, there's 96,500 coulombs. Fun. We're not there yet, but... That's the amperage. Good stuff. So if I want to plate that much silver, it would take me a certain amount of seconds. And then I could get it to minutes, but let's do this first. Well, it would be more fun with minutes, actually. Don't you think? I have less space than you. you got to start the part to the left. How many minutes? Did you get it? 64 minutes? I'm getting 16. Oh, I know what I screwed up. I went on to the next problem before I went to this problem. It will. This is a slight issue right here. The molar mass of silver is not 26 or 27. It's 107.87. 7.87-ish. That will make a difference. Sorry about that. I went to the aluminum one right away because it's so fun. It should be, it should come out to get 16 minutes. One oh seven point eight seven, I think it is, right? Yeah. Hi. What's that? Maybe problem. If you're listening on Schoology, Miss Thompson just walked in with a stack of papers. Do you have a question, Mrs. Thompson? You leave me a note. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Let's just say, let's just say this is aluminum. What would change? Gram. Obviously, we already know that, right? This would be 26.98 grams of aluminum. What else would change? Two moles what? Uh, nope. It'd be three moles of electrons. Because the aluminum needs three um, electrons for every one aluminum ion. And I didn't mean to do all this, but I'm going to guess I'm just going to repeat it. I was just going to make the changes, but oh well. Writing's fun. Thing people say per 60 seconds. The reason I even bring this up is because, and if you read about this in your books, this is crazy how much more time it takes. Huh? 60 hours? No, it's not that many. It's not that many hours, but it's a lot more time. How many minutes would this take? Start it there. 193? Okay, let's just put in hours quick. 193 minutes. 
which equals approximately how many hours? 3.2 hours. I'm making a mess of this here. Sorry if you're on school. Okay, it takes 3.2 hours. So if I want to plate the same amount of aluminum as silver, it takes me 3.2 hours versus 16 minutes. Aluminum is a very widely used metal for a lot of purposes. It's really lightweight, it's fairly strong, and it doesn't corrode. So it's used a lot. So it's electroplated a lot because for us to get pure aluminum, this is the best way for us to do it. To take it out of iron ore, start it with an aluminum ion, and make it into pure solid aluminum. If you read your book, the statistic is amazing. 5% of all the electricity used in the United States, we use a lot of electricity, 5% of it goes into electroplating aluminum. aluminum. That's a ton of electricity. So what do they do? That takes too darn long. So what do you think they do to make that process go faster? That's all you can do. Instead of making it 10 amps, maybe they make it 1,000 amps. Well, that is going to take a ton ton of electricity to make it happen. But they can make it go faster, but it takes it a lot more energy. Now, if we recycle, we can improve that. I have this. I don't want to just make it up. Recycling is a lot easier to melt aluminum than to take it from iron, from aluminum ore. We could save 95% of that energy if all of our aluminum got recycled. 95%. The other statistic that I, I got this from, from the AP thing, so I'll, I'll, I'll take this so much. Where'd it go? One can of aluminum being recycled, the amount of energy needed to reclaim that amount of aluminum would run your TV for three hours. That's another thing coming from the AP teacher that I'm guessing someone calculated it. But just taking one can. Well, that makes sense because this is only 10.8 grams. I don't know how much a can weighs, but it doesn't weigh that much. May, or maybe it does weigh about 10.8, maybe even more. And how much energy it takes to do that. So, recycle aluminum. There's only so much of it, and our best way to get it is to take it out of the ground and plate it. If you recycle it, they're just stripping the dyes off of it, getting rid of any of the colors they put on, like aluminum pop can, or like a Mountain Dew pop can. They're getting rid of the paints and dyes, and then they melt it. It takes a lot less energy to melt it than it does to electroplate it. That's the moral of the story.